Hello, welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick. Today we're playing Stationers. Today we're going to be making some upgrades to our furnace. We shall replace our basic furnace with an advanced furnace and we'll enclose it in a room to take care of the heat loss we've been having now. Now the fuel system and the automation and the instrumentation will remain the same. Uh, if you want to know how to build them, take a look at my last video because we'll just be just pinching them off and not, we won't be going through them again. Right, the trick with enclosing your furnace inside a room is that the room with the furnace in it is going to get quite hot. Even with a hard suit on it, the thousand plus degrees of the furnace is going to be enough to kill you very quickly. So we're going to have to build a room where we can actually access the furnace from outside the room. Uh, that being said, we won't need a lot of room if we don't have to go in there. So the spot I picked out for my furnace is just simply a two by one room. Now I always say good advice for people building, building furnaces is don't build it inside your base. You can blow up a large part of your base quite easily. But having said that, I'm going to build it in my base. Now, but I am actually going to build it facing an outside wall. Now, if you're going to ignore the advice and build it inside your base, at least build it facing an outside wall, because that will be important later on. First thing we need, of course, is our advanced furnace. Now I'm going to place that so the control panel is just poking past past the joint where we're going to build a wall. That will allow the control panels to be facing into this room, while behind it, the hot area of the furnace will be in the in the hot room. Now with the furnace in place, the next thing we're going to want to do is put in the waste tank. And bada bing! The waste tank is installed and piped up. The next thing we're going to want is a fuel system. Bada bong, fuel system's in. And the instrumentation panel. Bada boom, instrument panel on. And to wire it up, of course, I've got a power system over there. I shall use a transformer, as always, to isolate from the rest of the circuits. Right here, wire up. And done, all wired up. And I've also wired up the data port from the waste tank because we'll also put an extra couple of displays on there to make make sure we know what temperature and pressure we've got in the waste tank because that will be important to what we're doing. And there we are, two more displays hooked up to show us what's happening in the waste tank. It's important that we know what's happening in the waste tank because when this is the room we have a waste tank and the furnace will be the things in the room. We will be relying on heat transfer between the two of them to maintain the pressure. That's why it's important to use an uninsulated tank for the waste tank, otherwise the heat won't be able to get out. And when you're dealing with heat sensitive pipes, it's a good idea to use insulated pipes to do the piping, because anything, even just touching a frame, will cause heat loss in the system. And this whole purpose of doing all this is to preserve the heat. All right, now with all that done, we've got our control panels, all our controls, the obvious thing we've got here, is the inputs and outputs. We can't reach them if we're hiding behind this wall here, safe from the heat. So we're going to need some conveyors. And there we go. Shoots all connected up, have an input bin and it's an output shoot. Now I'll put them both over this side because there's a few more controls that are going to have to go onto this front panel there. Things are going to get pretty crowded so we have to be pretty careful with our feng shui of how we arrange it all or it's going to be taking up half the wall. Uh, so that's why. Do things your own way, but that's how I've done it today. Now one of the issues you may come across with this, because the furnace is going to be enclosed in a room and retain heat very well, you may actually have an issue with not being able to cool it down. So in the case that that happens, we're just going to have to put in a cool down valve. So we'll put in a valve around about here. And we'll hook that up to some radiators up the top. Now we can't actually hook anything in to cool down the furnace, but we can cool down the waste tank. So we tap it into this pipe here. We can then, whenever the furnace is too hot, we can just cool down the waste tank. And the waste tank will absorb, absorb the heat out of the furnace, and that will cool our whole system down. Now right, yeah, to pipe it up and put some radiators on the top. And there we go, all piped up. Radiators on. Cool down system in place. Now the only thing we have remaining is to put in our purge valve. So we'll just tap an extra point out of our 
cooldown one. So when we want to purge it, all you do is switch on the cooldown and then release the purge. Now with that all done, we're going to start sealing up the room. I like to put walls on the inside faces of all the walls there. So if for any reason you want to pull apart a wall anywhere surrounding it, you're not breaching your furnace room and plunging a thousand degree heat straight into your habitat. Right yeah, let's get it done. And there we go, furnace room all built up, some frames, walls, all sealed in. Right, almost, so it's almost all sealed in. What we've got here is on the back, I'm going to place a deliberate weak spot. It's facing the outside of the base, so I'm going to use one of my old iron frames that we start the game with. I'm going to pop a window in there. That way, if this room does overpressurize and blow out, it'll blow out all the hot gases to the outside of the base and not the inside. So a deliberate weak point in the room there to let it all out. That is especially important if you're somewhere like Europa or Luland where you have high pressures. Uh, you may want to fit something like this with a, a, a passive vent, an active vent on the outside so you can see the pressure inside. If that gets too, too high, because of course as the gas expands in there as it heats up, you can blow out that wall. So you may want to evacuate some of the gases there. On Mars I don't think it's going to be an issue, but I've built one there just in case. And also, we've got a purge, put a place to purge valve on the top. It's the same as we had on the old furnace there, just a valve and an external vent, just to release gases from the waste tank should we need. And there we go with our first test fire. See we've got some iron in there. The temperature between the furnace and the waste tank is just equalising to about 1089 degrees or thereabouts and it'll stay there until we actually try and use the furnace again. Around the back, the pressure in the room is down to 38 kilopascals. You can add a bit more in there if you like. Get up to around 50 kilopascals. Of course it is going to expand as it gets hotter so don't put too much in there. And there we go. Here it comes. Now iron and the furnace is staying hot ready for the next thing we want to do. Okay so the next thing we want to do is get a bit of our automation back. Uh, instead of using the, the logic circuits here, we're going to jump straight to the IC. Now, if you want to learn to program ICs, this is a very good project to start with because it is a very simple code. So, we'll whack one of them in, get it wired up with a computer. And there we are, hooked up. I'll put the IC in, I'll also put in a logic writer switch because sometimes you will want to override write the IC. So if we hook it up to the IC housing with the on switch, so now with that one we can switch our IC housing on and off from the control panel. Now from here we shall hook up T0 to our advanced furnace. Rightio, and we are done, switch it on. Bit squeaky little behind there, but we don't need to access it, so that'll be fine. Uh, Right, so we get on the programming. Now, if we get our tablet once again, we put in our configuration card in it, we look at our furnace, we can see, as with the other furnace, it's got a, a properties there called open and the same reagent recipe hash. We'll use those two in the program to eject the finished in ingots when they're, when they're done. Uh, so instead of using a logic circuit, we're just going to put in a few lines of code to exa do exactly the same thing. And there we have the code for it. We've set an alias to pin T0, just call it furnace to make our code a bit easier to read. And we've got our loop here, start through the code and jump back to the start. First we load the recipe hash from the furnace, store it in variable R0. 
set not equal. So if R0 is not equal to 0, save the variable back into R0, so it either becomes 1 or 0. It's either true or false. It's not equal to 0, true or false. And we save that back into the open command. So if that is not equal to 0, we get a 1, which opens it. If that is equal to 0, we get a false, which is 0, which will close it. That's it. Three lines of code inside a loop, and that will eject our ingots whenever they're ready. Confirm that, export it, and we should be good. If we try and open that, it should close it back up for us. Good O. And to test it with some ingots, we've got some steel. We've still got plenty of temperature in there. Remember that temperature is in Celsius, not in Kelvins. Chuck into mine. Notice we've got an ingot. It's ready to spit it out. And out it comes. Easy. Now we've got the temperature is absorbing heat back from the waste tank. So the temperature is now going up again in the furnace, even though we're not adding any more fuel. The temperature will keep going up until it equalises with the waste tank. And there we have it. The furnace has now got all the things happening that was happening with the old furnace. We've brought over the, the instrumentation, the automatic eject and the fuel system. But now it's built into its own room so it's holding its heat. Big improvements, but we can do better. Now I would like to add a bit more to the code so that we can actually automate the pressure. So we just need to tell it what pressure we need and it will automatically set it for us just to make it a bit easier. Uh, but we'll save that for another day. I uh, hope that's been helpful. That's all we've got now and we'll catch you next time. Happy building. See ya.